I was recently asked to do a video on medical cannabis and anxiety. Anxiety is one of the most common reasons why people do get a medical cannabis card. But not everybody does well with it. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So I have been counseling people on how to use CBD hemp derived products since about 10 years now. And I've also been a medical marijuana certifying physician for THC for about seven. So I have a lot of experience on this, but as things go, I learn more. Now, up until this point, there has been very little research that's been done on the use of any form of medical cannabis, whether it's hemp derived CBD and the derivatives there, or whether it's THC. And for how long that this has been out for, you would think we would have more research. Part of the problem is that when it comes to THC, that there, we can't study it right now because it's considered the, uh, you know, a top scheduled drug by the FDA deemed to have no medical benefit and high addiction properties to it. So researchers can't really do it except for using one particular strain of some not very good cannabis out of Mississippi. OK, and unfortunately, with CBD, we don't really see much there. But of course, with any kind of, of uh, natural product. Whereas under with big pharma who can put millions and millions of dollars into um, researching and marketing their products, you can't really do that so often with with supplements, with herbal products, etc. Because there's not that type of financial backing, and so that puts us in a big in a big big issue. Okay, now there have been some studies that have showed different forms of cannabinoids reduce anxiety, but there's also been some studies that shown that it hasn't. Now my personal approach has always been a recognizing that each person is unique we have different stressors in our lives of course we have different genetics and of course how healthy we are both mentally and physically has a very big impact on how we may do with the treatment or if we develop a condition in the first place okay so while these treatments um have been lacking in the research again because i've been working with this for so long I've learned a thing or two or 12 or 20 um, in order to know what I can observe. And when taking an approach that you'd make one change at a time, you give some time, you know, at least several days before you make another change, whether it's adding um, the amount of, in I'm sorry, increasing the amount of the cannabinoid that's being given or whether you want to change to another product or whether you um, want to do more than one product at a time, you got to give enough time for it to be observed, um, to be observed. But one of the nice things about cannabinoids is that the effects are felt pretty much immediately, right? Within the same hour, within a few minutes, depending on how you inhale it or swallow it, etc. But I always do like to give several days before making a change because you may have had a good day, you may have had a bad day. Not everybody has the same day every day, but within several days, you should have a pretty good idea as to what the impact it is on yourself. Okay. Now, um, and that's also, of course, why I you know, strongly recommend working with a physician who knows about this stuff. OK, there's a lot of doctors out there and in the goodness of their heart that they're certifying people, but they don't know very much. In fact, they may say go to the dispensary and let them teach you about it, which, of course, that's kind of a hey, besides the fact I think it's shirking responsibilities because a doctor should be an expert in anything that they are recommending to their patient. But of course, when you go to a dispensary, you may get somebody great, very experienced. You may be, get somebody who has been working there for a week, right? And you don't necessarily know they don't have a sign on that says who they are. So, uh, you know, very buyer beware, purchaser beware um, when you go to those types of things. But when you're told exactly what to do and what kind of product to be looking for, um, how you dose it out, milligrams, inhalations, etc., you just have a much better chance of of getting it right okay now um and as i said you know people this isn't a treatment for everybody in fact there's going to be a certain number of people who do poorly in fact i know somebody who has done poorly on every single type of cannabinoid that she's tried whether it's cbd from hemp whether it's marijuana anything even the smallest amount made her worse okay um and so you know, I feel bad because, like, in fact, she's really the only person who I was completely not to make any progress on whatsoever. But uh, at the same time, you know, that's why we take this individualized approach. And one of the other things, of course, we strongly recommend people do is to keep a log. What you took, how much of it, um, and what you felt for that, you know, maybe making a scale of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 on your anxiety, your insomnia, your panic attacks, whatever it may be, your appetite, which, of course, can all be affected by that. And you can see over time how that changes, right? Okay, so 
Before we do talk about the different types of treatment approaches, though, I do want to talk a little bit about how this works. So as you may know, we all have what's called the endocannabinoid system in our body. We have endocannabinoid receptors and we make endocannabinoids. So we all have this. In fact, all vertebrates and even some non-vertebrates have this. So this is a system that's been developed since the creation of time. However long you want to be there, we've all had an endocannabinoid system. The purpose of an endocannabinoid system is to maintain homeostasis, balance in the body. If the immune system is potentially too strong or too weak, it brings it around to be more neutral. Okay, same thing is true with mental health conditions, pain conditions, etc. And how it works is what's called a retrograde system, which is kind of neat. Most of the time, when it comes to inflammation, when it comes to neurotransmitters, one cell releases the neurotransmitter, it stimulates the second cell, and it propagates the system. But in this case, if one cell is under or over firing too much on this one, this second cell sends an endocannabinoid back to the first one where the receptors are on the backside here. And that basically can tell the cell, chill out. We don't, I don't need you being so activated so far. You're, you're driving me nuts here, okay? Um, and of course, in the perfect working system, that's how people are healthy, okay? But sometimes that's too much. And the analogy that I make with that is if you take your kid bowling, OK, now for us, we go too far one way, too far the other. We end up in the gutter. But our kids, they put those rails up, right? Too far left, too far right. It pushes them back into the middle. So that's what the endocannabinoid system does. But imagine if you can build bigger rails because maybe you throw a ball really bad if that, if that kid does that. But the bigger the rails, the less likely you're going to jump the rails, right? So that's how I look at the plant-based cannabinoids, building bigger rails, more ability to keep things pushed towards the center, OK? I actually learned that one when I was taking my kids bowling one day and it kind of just came to me in a flash. Okay. Now, um, be, so the CBD itself does not seem to work directly on these endocannabinoid system, on, on the endocannabinoid receptors. It seems to mostly work by keeping around our endocannabinoids that we make longer, therefore able to stimulate the endocannabinoid receptors for a longer period of time. OK, now it does seem to have CBD does seem to have other effects on neurotransmitters as a whole. It does seem that it may be working on the serotonin receptor or altering it in some way um, to but that can provide an anti-anxiety effect. It also can do the similar with GABA um, receptors. GABA, when a person is a calming amino acid that's in our brains that can stimulate more calmness, serenity, etc. When people take Valiums or other benzodiazepines, those also work on the GABA ergic or the GABA receptors. Okay, so kind of an understanding of how that's working in the anxiety realm. Okay, now the THC itself works by directly stimulating those endocannabinoid systems. So you can think of even bigger rails on the bigger rails there. Okay, and it also does seem to have an impact on the serotonin, on the serotonin receptors as well, and seems to also slow the reuptake of, of serotonin. That's actually how medications of serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prozac, Zoloft, all of those types of things, how they seem to work. So they are working on receptors in some similar ways as to how the pharmaceuticals do it. But of course, this is not pharmaceutical. OK, now it is also important to remember that THC, too much of it can cause a problem and it can actually cause something called a serotonin, um, a serotonin syndrome, which is an overdoing it. And that can cause agitation, restlessness, abnormal movements, dizziness, diarrhea, hallucinations. It can increase body temperature. You can lose coordination from it. So, you know, there's there, you know, with anything I've had patient, I saw a patient once who overdosed on water drinking like. Seven, you know, I think she drank like 12 gallons of water a day, but too much of anything could be a problem. OK, now it is also good to know, though, that CBD can decrease or even completely block the negative effects of THC, including the intoxication. Now, I realize some people use the, the euphoric effect of it, um, the lightheaded aspect of it as a benefit. So I'm not saying that as a negative thing. But also some people get really stoned from it, right? Or they can get really agitated or they can get really um, increase their anxiety from THC. So that's why when we, we mix them together, you know, there are people who will use one-to-one -one ratios, different types of ratios. I personally recommend that when using these types of products, don't buy a ratioed product to figure it out. 
you can't increase one part without increasing the other. So I always prefer to have a CBD and a THC product. I recommend people always start the CBD first and work up the dose. And then if they need to bring the THC in while keeping the CBD there and from that protective effect. And then once they see how they're doing, maybe they can decrease the CBD and how they feel from that. But that's to me the best way of figuring out what the right approach is for the individual. Okay. Now, Let's talk a little bit, though, about strains. Now, people use the term strains, but actually these are not different strains. So of, amongst the cannabis plants, strains actually refer to bacteria, okay? They do not mean to plants. So the proper term is a cultivar, okay? That's the name of the different types of um when you hear about different types of plants. So in the in the main world, you know, you know, people use the word strains, but to be accurate, we're gonna use the term cultivars. Okay. Now, in addition to that, you know, the thing that makes one cultivar different from another are the minor cannabinoids, but also the terpenes. Terpenes have different effects. There are certain terpenes. So when you know at, at any dispensary, um, they should be able to give you what the main terpenes are. Okay. The ones that are called um caryophyllin, myrcene, and limonene. Those seem to have the most anxiety lowering potential. Okay. Guayol and terpinaline, actually the opposite. Those are the ones that are more likely to increase anxiety. Now, this is not for everybody. I know people who will say, I have a problem with those, but um, with those ones that you said are fine. But at the same time, I'm fine with other products. So again, it's not a one size fits all. There still needs to be some variability. There's going to be some variability. So again, starting low, going slow, seeing how the changes are is the way to go. Okay. Now I also want to talk a little bit about other cannabinoids that can impact anxiety. The one that I have been using a lot of recent is called CBG. Okay. Now CBG um, does seem to have more of a direct impact on things like anxiety and depression. So I'll bring that into the mix. Um, after CBD, I have patients who may not want to go to THC. So CBG would be um, a nice next option if the CBD alone would be going. But I like to keep these, all of them going as I'm introducing things, A, to not make one change at a time. But also, let's face it, Mother Nature provided all of these things in the plants together. So I try not to do an isolate with it. I, you know, I sometimes need to. So that's when you hear about full spectrum or broad spectrum versus isolates. And I always prefer to do a spectrum product. OK, now there's another one that I also use a lot called CBN and CBN. It seems to help most helping people sleep. Now, of course, people who sleep better are more likely to have lower depression, lower anxiety because they're well rested. They're feeling good about themselves. They're not dragging. So sometimes improving sleep can therefore decrease the other mental health system symptoms. OK, so as I said, the most important thing, though, is to go low, go slow and to um, keep a good lock of all this. So as a whole, find a doctor who knows what they're talking about um, if you don't know what you're doing for this, because you want to do it the right way. And of course, if you have a negative reaction because you took a product or too much of it to start off with, you may decide, hey, this isn't for me in the first place. And in fact, that may not be so. It may be you just didn't know what you're doing. OK, so and overall, my other biggest thing is, gosh, there needs to be more research. And, you know, they've been talking about descheduling or, or rescheduling um, cannabis. I hope that they re that they descheduled altogether because we really don't need big pharma getting involved with this because then we know what big pharma does. And that's what happens if they start um, rescheduling it and drug companies want to get their uh, get their paws on this. So hopefully we will see descheduling altogether. And uh, there you go. Have a great day. Oh,